Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. And this module is on IPv6. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to look at all of these different items associated with configuring IPv6 in your Windows 7 environment. This is configuring name resolution, connecting to a network, setting up connections for a network, network locations, resolving connectivity issues, and something called link local multicast name resolution. We're going to really dive into a lot more about IPv6. And this is going to be very, very important for you going forward because, of course, IPv6 is the latest transport technology to come along. And as we migrate away from IPv4 and migrate to IPv6, it's going to be especially important we know how to configure our Windows 7 desktops to be able to take advantage of that. If you've configured IPv4, go look at our previous video on configuring IPv4. The process is almost identical to IPv4. We go to our local area connection properties. You can find that, of course, in your control panel under Network and Sharing Center. Change adapter settings. Right click on an adapter and choose properties. And you have all those properties underneath there for IPv4 and IPv6 and a lot of other properties as well. It brings up this Internet Protocol version 6 property screen that you could then use to configure manually the IPv6 address and the DNS server address you'd like to use. Or we can use the automatic settings and have those retrieved automatically, assuming, of course, that you have technology in place to provide you with an automatic IPv6 address, which these days isn't always the case. Of course, you can also do this from the command line. If you're on a separate machine and you want to perform this, this function from a remote computer without going to this graphical interface, you can use those same NetSH commands that we used in our previous video for IPv4, except we're using the IPv6 setting to set the address in there. One thing to keep in mind when you're using IPv6 is today when people are doing name resolution of IPv6, they're going to a DNS server and they're retrieving the records. And if the record is an A record, an address record, it's really referring to the old IPv4 address. But if you are going to a DNS server and you're requesting an IPv6 host, what will be returned is an AAAA record. And that doesn't mean a lot if you're not doing a lot of really detailed DNS work. But it's something to keep in mind if you ever do an NS lookup and you're looking at the types of messages coming back from your DNS server, and you see an address that has this AAAA record associated with it, that means that's an IPv6 address. Here's our Windows 7 computer. And if I go down to my Start menu, and we choose our Control Panel, and right in here is my Network and Sharing Center. And you go to the Change Adapter Connections here. And our Local Area Connection is right here. It's named Local Area Connection. It's obviously important when we start working with this at the command line. And I right mouse click and choose Properties. We have all of these different items that come up. The Client for Microsoft Networks and Quality of Service Packet Schedulers. The one we want, of course, is Internet Protocol version 6. And here are our properties. And we can, of course, manually configure these addresses ourselves. Type in the really big IPv6 address, the subnet prefix link, and the default gateway in here. And of course, we can add our DNS servers in here for IPv6 as well. Very simple to put that in at the GUI, but we'd also like to be able to do this at the command line as well. And that becomes a little bit more important when you're managing devices remotely. Later on in this chapter, we have a video on remote management of devices. And being able to do all of these things at a command line becomes very, very important. So let's do that as well. One thing to keep in mind at the command line is that we need to know the name of the adapter that we're going to be applying these commands to. And the name here, the default name, in fact, for Windows 7 in this first adapter is Local Area Connection. You can, of course, right mouse click and rename that. Just remember that when you're renaming it, you change what you're going to be putting in at the command line. And we're going to put the name of this in quotes. I'm going to leave Local Area Connection right here because this will probably match what you're doing on yours. Just remember at the command line what that happen to be. I'm going to run an IP config here just so we can see that we have a DNS suffix here. I have a link local IPv6 address. And that is something that's used just locally for IPv6. If you recall back to our video on IPv4 and IPv6 overview, we talked a little bit about those addresses. We're going to put in a local address here. And we already have some IPv4 addresses. 192.168.0.7 is our IPv4 address. So let's, let's create a new IPv6 address at the command line rather than just typing this in at the GUI. So we'll do 
a NetSH and an interface. Uh, this will be an IPv6, and we're going to use a command called set address. And this is where I'm going to choose my local area connection. And then after that, I'm going to put in the actual name of the address. And I'm going to do this shortcut of two colons to specify a bunch of zeros all together. And then I'm just going to put in 192.168.0.7 and hit Enter. And you can see it just gives us a prompt back. That means whatever we typed in worked just fine. If I did an IP config again, you'll see there is now an IPv6 address in here, and it matches that address that we just put in there. And if you'd like to also confirm this at the command line, we can do a NetSH interface IPv6, and we can do a show address just to make sure that what we have in there is correct. And we can see that, indeed, we have a manual address that was added, and it was colon colon 192.168.0.7. So that way we have the same IPv4 address and IPv6 address. At least they look similar. And when we're looking at those addresses on our machine, now we have some consistency that we can use when looking at those local addresses. Just like when working with IPv4, we want to be sure we're able to communicate via IPv6. And a lot of the same processes that we use for IPv4 are exactly the same in IPv6. The only thing we're really changing is what we're typing in at the command line. For instance, one of the first things you should always check for a network connection is do we really have a good connection into the computer? Do we see on the other end of the, of the wire, on the other end of the fiber, if we're really connected? And what we're looking for here are lights. We're looking to see if we have a link light on our Ethernet adapter. And we're looking to see if any of those are blinking. That would signify that there is actual traffic and activity going over that link. We can also run the command NetSH interface IPv6 show neighbors. And our IPv6 stack will show us who else is out there on the network. And that might give us at least a heads up that we are connected properly and we do see other devices on the network. We'll also want to do an IP config slash all if you'd like to look at the configuration and look at every single one of those little networking commands that we would look at in there. You could also do what we just did, which is a NetSH interface IPv6 show address, just to confirm the addresses that we have on our computer are the ones that we would expect. And then we can try connecting to other devices. We can ping other devices. We can trace route other devices. By default, Windows 7 is going to try to use IPv4 to do that. So to tell Windows 7 I want to use IPv6 to perform these functions, use a dash 6 flag. And that's with your ping and your trace route and those other built-in network troubleshooting commands. And that will make sure that Windows 7 uses IPv6 to run those commands rather than the IPv4 protocol. Pinging and trace routing with IPv6 will look very similar to what we did with IPv4. The difference is, though, we'll put the dash 6 right after the ping. And let's ping ipv6.google.com and hit Enter. It will resolve the IPv6 address for google.com. It will set up a Torito tunnel to Google using a third party. And there we go. Our tunnel is set up. And now we are pinging ipv6.google.com. So it may have a bit of a delay as that tunnel gets built, because that's the method that I'm using to encapsulate IPv6 within my normal IPv4 protocol and sending it all the way out and having that tunnel being built to Google. Let's see exactly where it's going then. Let's do a trace RT. Dash six, and let's see how we get to ipv6.google.com. And we'll have it step through all of those different links. And you'll see the first thing that happens is a six to four host at he.net. Hurricaneelectric.net is a very big IPv6 provider. And you can see it hopping through all of those different links to get via IPv6 and all the way till it gets to ipv6.google.com. So by using these same commands that we already know, that we already use all the time, the ping command, the trace route command, makes it very, very easy to troubleshoot, no matter whether you're troubleshooting IPv4 or troubleshooting IPv6. Let's see what we've learned in this module with IPv6. Our first question is, how can you view all of the IPv6 addresses on your workstation from the command line? And we used an IP config to give us a general overview. But to see everything relating just to IPv6, we can use the NetSH interface IPv6 show address. The next question, what is the Windows 7 built-in method of tunneling IPv6 in IPv4 packets across multiple network address translations? And that's one that, if you recall, we talked a lot about in our IPv4 and IPv6 overview. And we used it, actually, in this video. And that was doing Torito. 
And the last question, which command line flag do you often need to enable for IPv6 support? Whether you're doing a ping or a trace route, if you want to confirm that it's using IPv6, we use the dash 6 flag. Well, that covers our requirements in this video for using IPv6, setting it up on your Windows 7 workstation, and doing troubleshooting, making sure that IPv6 protocol is going to work properly. If you'd like to watch many, many other Microsoft 7680 videos, you'd like to talk to me on our message boards or send me an email, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.